I said it ain't edited in the natural, but when the Holy Ghost gets on us, he's better than an editor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Welcome to Faith Tabernacle Science School. Richard Ball. I was uh, saying a little bit about some of the things we were discussing earlier. Yeah. Out at work, uh, got into a little bit of a discussion about <laughs> the Bible and so forth with a couple of guys. That, and we were talking about religion, talking about different religions. Uh, but you hang on your door. And one of them was talking about he was a uh, uh, Southern Baptist, and one was talking about that he was a uh, Catholic, but he really wasn't a practicing Catholic. And I said, it doesn't really matter what you hang on your door, as the slate said. It's as long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Without him, you cannot make it into heaven. His blood is the only thing that could wash you, Amen. wash away your sin. I said, there's going to be some Catholics yeah. that are going to make it in. There's going to be some Baptists that are going to make it in. Pentecostal, all the way down the line. And there's going to be some that ain't. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line of it is, you got to know the truth. Because the truth is going to set you free. I'm making it by the Bible So... As long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and He came, and His blood was shed on Calvary for the remission of our sins, and He took the stripes for our healing, then we got a common denominator. And we're all on our way to the right place, which is heaven. But if you don't believe that much, there's no way you can make it in. Nope. Jesus said, if you try to make it up another way, the same as a thief and a liar. Robber. It's not a robber. A robber. They a robber. Amen. Amen. So. You don't want to rob God, you don't want to be a liar. Now listen today, glory to God. All glory, honor, and praise belongs to who? God. To God. Amen. Amen. So when we do something, we don't glory in ourselves. Look what I do. We glory in what God has allowed us to do. Amen. God used us to do these things. Because without God, we couldn't do nothing. That's right. just be a pile of dust. God said he made us from the dust of the earth. And we, want, we can become a living soul till he breathed the breath of life into our nostrils. The word says, in him we, we move and have our being. That's right. That's right. And if you're not one of his children, you don't have any other choice but to be a child of the devil. Can't be right in the middle either. No. Nope. The Bible says you can't have two masters. you got to have... Gotta be all the way saved or all the way lost. Or cold. Because <laughs> when you get in the middle of the road, you're in trouble. All right. Our lesson is it found in Luke 2. Starts out uh, our third verse. Goes down through the 20th verse. And all went to be taxed, everyone, into the, his own city. So this is talking about the time of the year whenever the taxation comes along. We're all fixing to experience that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been going on for a long time, ever since about Caesar's time. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, Amen. because he was of the house and lineage of David. Amen. That's very important because with all the Old Testament prophets, the word came by God that he would get the Savior would be of the house of David, mm -hmm. also of the tribe of Judah, yep. and through Mary and Joseph, he qualified for every uh, pre pre written word about him. He qualified. That's right. The priest of his day, that the ones the scribes that knew the lineage of folks, would have known for a fact mm -hmm. that their child was, was supposed to be the king. They knew it. They already knew. That's right. That's why that those that withstood Christ are the very ones that should have been the first ones to say, this is the Messiah. But they would have stood in the worst. The scribes and Pharisees and the high priests and all, they should have known who he was. They knew. But the reason why that they didn't want to admit it is because they knew they were fixing to lose their jobs. There was no longer a need for the people to, to bring the sacrifice up to the high priest anymore because Jesus is the high priest. Okay, that's it. I missed that. I forgot. Yeah, I got mine. I keep forgetting it. Your lady, I need to quit forgetting. Divest it. Okay. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, to be great with child. Amen. So, as we know, she's fixed.
hastened to give birth to Lord Jesus Lord. Christ. Yeah. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Amen. Number seven, Mom. So Jesus could have been born in the best palace on earth. But he chose to come to a very humble way. And not, not much more of a humble way you can come to being born in a major. <laughs> and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Amen. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. It was a scary sight to have a powerful angel full of light being down on the right yeah. And yeah. They, they never experienced anything like that before. That's right. It made me kind of think about when, when Saul at the time, Paul, later yeah. his name was when the Paul, Lord blinded. Yeah. When he blinded him on his way to Damascus, that light came down. He wasn't able to see for a while. He had to have somebody to lead him around. But that would be quite an experience to be out there at night, and all of a sudden, here comes this big bright light. Yeah, <laughs> not a and then the angel speaking to you and letting you know. <laughs> but these these shepherds were probably already watching and already listening. They knew that well, Christ was coming. God's they knew. They were anxious. God's messenger angels had to be in His presence before mm -hmm. they come. And he, that's like when Moses went up on the mountain. When he came down, he shined right. so many days. Had to put a veil on him. Cause, right. Well, that 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 angel had that Holy Ghost conviction light yep. on him too. And that's why they were so afraid. He read uh, yeah. that light. Yeah. God's spirit. God's light. Yeah. That's right. You know, there's this. Uh, there was a 16th century painter. His name is Rembrandt. He's very famous. Yeah. He uh -huh. lived to be 63 years old. He uh, painted lots of depictions of uh, Bible scenes, and when he painted. Christian birth in the manger. One of the the shepherds had a lantern, and all the shepherds around him. That part of the, even though he's holding the light up, it was dark mm -hmm. where he was holding the lantern. Yet where the little baby was in the swaddling clothes, there in the Blowing. it all the light was emanating from the baby more right. so than the actual so lantern. The light of the world. That's right. Yeah, because he's the light of the world. Amen. That's right. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. I feel the anointing in this house. The Lord does. That's why whenever the and person gets light, saved, there's a perfect pureness and judgment. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's, a perfect, that's, that's the conviction perfect. I was talking about. Amen. Amen. That's, that's if there's cool. any sin around, it gets rid of it. Well, it's just like when somebody comes down to the altar. But if a person true. wants to hold on to their sin, they run from that they light. Say they yeah. Yeah. You can tell they them want it to get it, get it off, and they go into the light. Yeah. So there's that's a change right. in their counts. There are people, there are people that don't want it off of them and run from it to the shame. They run to the darkness. Well, that's what the Bible says. The Bible said that talks about that the, that sin likes to dwell in darkness. You don't see a, a lot of sinners wanting to come out in the light. Now I know that there's robbers and thieves that have gotten bold, but when you go to nightclubs, it's not usually real bright in there. It's usually dark. Amen. And there's a reason for that because of the sin in there. When they do turn the lights on, it's ugly, brother. It's ugly. It's an ugly scene. <laughs> I ain't been there a long many years, but I remember it Amen. was ugly. Amen. Thank That's God why they call it last call. It makes you wonder sometimes how we could ever tolerate it. <laughs> Brother, I believe it's your turn, isn't it? No, I haven't read yet. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. We have that right here on the wall. See there? Amen. 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 Not a lot showed up this morning for Sunday school. Where are they? Okay, Richard. And this shall be a sign to you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, 
mind in a name. So the heavens were rejoicing as well as those that are on earth that were looking for the coming of, of Christ. That's just like whenever that one gets saved, they're rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Because I believe that our forefathers and so forth that have gone on to be with the Lord, whenever that they see one of us pray through, then they rejoice in the presence of God. God lets them see that they that this child that they had prayed for so long ago has come in. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known. It was a typo on our lesson. They yes, messed it in on that yeah. note. Yeah. Every once in a while you see the typo. <laughs> yeah. Sure was. Yeah. 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 I was thinking, when this prophecy was fulfilled, it was a prophecy that began way back under in Adam and Eve's time. Whenever that God was talking about. This is chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that, that thy seed shall bruise his heel, and, I, and her seed shall bruise his head. That's right. And that was the first mention of Jesus. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. So when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things. Bible, our, our lesson doesn't go all the way into some of the other things that happened, but uh, when the, the shepherds were going, they also stopped by and talked to King Herod. Yeah. And he took he tried to get them to let him know where the babe was, the wise, because he wanted to go, or the wise men, rather, more came. He wanted to go and worship him, or so he said. But really, what he wanted to do in his heart was to get rid of him, because he, the wise men from the east, they had been following. For their ancestors, all the way back 500 years back to the mm -hmm. time of captivity in Babylon, the prophecies of the words of Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amen. so forth and so on, concerning the birth of the Savior of the world. Right. They were more looking for it than the actual Jews that the word was given to. Mm -hmm. And they brought gifts Amen. Unto, unto Christ. And that's where the gift bearing came from. That's why we give gifts at Christmas. Not so much to see how much money we can spend. Yeah, that's right. But we do it just as a remembrance that the wise men brought gifts unto Christ. And God gave the best gift he had in heaven, which is Jesus. Here, here, most of the world has turned Christmas into a financial experiment. Mm -hmm. About this time of year, the, the, the retail stores it, make this. It's just like Christmas, Easter, every holiday just about that comes along. It's all about the money. And it's all about how much you can spend, but that's not what it's all about. Easter was actually the very birth of salvation as we know it today. Because that's whenever the Jesus actually went to Calvary and did re and resurrected, and there was no more need of a blood sacrifice after that. That's right. That was the last blood sacrifice that had to be made. That's why the temple veil was rent from the top to the bottom. God said, we don't need this no more. Just ripped it right in half. 
people also I heard they make Christmas have to be some kind of uh, contest who can get a competition who can right. get the other one the right. most expensive yeah. gift. That's not what no, it's about. It's not about that. No. That's not it. Oh, I got you the most expensive. Who cares? <laughs> that's that's why, not what it's about. That's that's why sometimes you see you it's hear silly. these, these words. Said, said, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah there you go. I Is that all you guys be giving? Like that. No, no, man, no and they've already got they've already got everything they can hope for. Yeah. You know, and they look at it and they say. Is this it? You gotta be kidding me, you know? Because they're expecting to get a certain gift, mm -hmm. and if they don't get that certain gift, they're all disappointed. But the thing about it is, it's the not all about that. Jesus, it, the, the gift has already been. The, yeah. the gift has already come. Yeah. The gift was given over two thousand years ago when Jesus came. So the gift has already come, but we. As people have a tendency that in, to think, oh, I got to go out here and spend a whole bunch of money and buy a great big gift, or else I'm just not doing my job. That's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. If you want to give a gift, give you can give a small gift. Give them something they can use. Don't go out and try to see how much money you can spend to stay in debt the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. That's what happens so many times. People stay in, they're always in debt. Why? Because they're spending their money. I know where you can never go wrong. Ask the Lord what That's you right. Give. That's right. Sometimes That's it's be little. It. Sometimes it's big. It's whatever God lays on your heart. Sometimes you don't have to spend any money. There you go. Because Word. the best gift of all Love. has already come. Free. Amen. If you go back to verse 10, it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of right. great joy. Oh, great joy. It's Amen. the joy of Christ. Is what it, that's the giving. That's it. That's the great giving. That's, 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 that's the, the whole thing. What, what to say on the altar up here? In remembrance. In remembrance of Jesus. Of there we go. Amen. Amen. Everything is in remembrance of the remembrance communion, of Jesus. Easter, Christmas, every day, yeah. every tree, every yeah. person, every soul. Amen. So the, the biggest thing is that that promise that had been talked about for so many years, the coming of the Lord, had been fulfilled. And many people didn't even know. They didn't even realize that he had come. Just those that were looking for him. Realized that he was coming. But those that weren't looking for him, they didn't realize he was coming. In the same way when the rapture takes place. There's a whole lot of people. The rapture's going to come and it's going to go. And people are not even going to realize that it's taking place because they're not looking for it. There's going to be whole organizations that are not even going to know anything at all about the rapture taking place. Because for one thing, they don't believe in it. And if you don't believe in it, how are you ever going to receive any part of it? Same way with the birth of Christ. Many people didn't believe he was coming, but he did. I went to Billy Graham yesterday, and he was preaching on evangelism and, and of the such of salvation, of course, because that's what mm -hmm. evangelists do. Right. They go out and try to get as many as they can get saved. And what do they do? He prepares them for, for the pastors to be disciples for the pastors right. so they can get to a church. But the whole message was salvation, Jesus. Every time the word comes out, it's all about Jesus. Christmas, just like Brother Lambert just said, Easter, Christmas, every day, all the time, uh -huh. is nothing but Jesus. 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 That's right. It's, it's, it's all about Jesus, nothing but Jesus. It's always going to be Jesus. Uh -huh. It's never going to be no less than Jesus. It's just going to be Jesus. That's right. And if everyone focuses on the same Lord and Savior, they're going to get the same gift. Yeah. They're going to get the same joy. They're going to get the same anointing. Amen. They're going to worship the same God. And it's all going to be what? The same, the same Jesus. Jesus. Amen. All the same, all Israel, the time. Like Egypt, we're going to the same cloud. All, all the time. It's, it's just <laughs> because the Jesus fire, came Jesus to do away with sin same. once and for all. He's you know? always the same. He but will never everybody change. can get saved. It's a whosoever will walk. Yeah. Anybody that wants to serve Christ can. And the only thing that's going to stop you from serving Christ is you yourself. After a million years, you're not going you to get paroled out of hell. Us, <laughs> any sin you do, <laughs> that's right. That's one thing. Years, you're not going to get paroled out. You as long as you haven't blasphemed God, you don't get no you know, blasphemed Jesus, the Holy Ghost. Did you just send me a, some water in a cup and put it on my books? No. no. <laughs> you know, the, the rich man, can you send me a drop of water? Can you send me a cup of water on my books? No, I can't. Yeah, but that's why that God it's made silly. a way for us, and, and Jesus does everything he can to keep people from going to hell. And I'll say something, too. The more praying saints you got for you, going for you, the better off you are, too. Yeah, I was just about to say, uh, the best the gift you can give someone important. is to get your prayer closet right. and pray for them and get saved. That's the Amen. most important Amen. thing those that are is prayer. prayer. Keep it on your knees before God, and don't give up. Don't give up on them. Because yeah. when you give up on them, the battle's over. Amen. As Amen. long as there's hope, 
Because there's breath, there's hope. That's Do you what, know how mir miraculous is the work of the Holy Spirit? Uh -huh. Without that Holy Spirit going and convicting them, doing God's job, the, the Spirit of God coming to the people and convicting them in their hearts and in their minds and their spirits and souls, do you know how it, it'll blow your mind how oh, yeah. wonderful, outstanding the Holy Spirit is at his job? That's right. He does a tremendous job for Christ that's never ended. It's, well, it's, without him, we couldn't do anything. It It'll, it'll blow your mind, Couldn't Richard. Do one thing. It'll, 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 he does such a fabulous, miraculous uh -huh. job. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit coming and convicting me of my heart of the things I've done, I would never have been saved. That's right. Never. Amen. And I venture to say, if it wasn't for God and His mercy, some yes. of us in this room wouldn't be wouldn't here. Wouldn't even today. be here. That's right. Because of the lifestyle we were living. I got my last chance. We would have gone down. <laughs> Amen. I Amen. understand that. So thank God for that mercy. Early. And that's why we have to learn to be merciful as well. Yes. If we want God to be merciful towards us, we have to be merciful towards us. That doesn't mean we condone the sin. But that means that we don't sit there and say, oh, they're going to hell anyway. I'm not going to mess with them. you got to pray. Unless God says to stop praying for them, you continue to pray for them. Because God's the only one that knows where the cutting off point. There is a cutting off point. Mercy. There is a time in which there is no more there is no more hope. They may have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. If they've done that, there's no hope. If they send away their day of grace, and there is a point in which that you have to, that there's a line that God's draw, got drawn in the sand. Kind of like when Samson drew that line and said, You go across here, you've had it, you know. Most and that's do. the same way it is with us. You go across that line, you've had it. Samson had and we don't know where that, that line is. That's why you don't play around with God. No. You don't come in and out like a revolving door. When you come in to serve God, you come in with a made-up mind Amen. that you're going to serve God. And you got to make up your mind that no matter what Satan throws at you, you're going to still hang in there. And whenever that you have problems, go to the brother. Don't go to somebody that's got the same problem you got. Right. Go to somebody that's going to give you the right answer, somebody that preaches the truth. And that's why a lot of times people will come here or to somebody that they know is preaching the truth rather than coming to somebody else that they will compromise with. Compromisation doesn't do nothing but get you in hell. And it'll get the compromiser in hell as well as the person that they're telling the lies to. you got to tell them the truth because that's the only thing that's going to set you free. It's yeah, going to make you free. free. Yeah. When, you, when you tell the truth, it hurts a little bit sometimes at, at, at first, but in the end, it brings about a great joy. A great healing. Uh huh. Because if you, if you tell them lies and they go to hell and you go to hell with them, what good is that doing? Everybody's in a lake of fire burning. That ain't going to do nobody no good. God's word to the people before the New Testament, God said he sent us, he would rise with healing in his wings. That's healing. right. And now the nations. And now and he arise, and he arose on the third day. Mm -hmm. And not only was he resurrected, all that put their faith and belief in him will be resurrected too. That's right. Amen. And many of the old saints were seen yeah, yeah. around the holy city back then, yeah. They, all, they were walking around talking to people. Amen. That was the first time that people were able to go up into heaven when Jesus took them up into heaven. Before that, the best they could do was go to paradise. That's why there is no more paradise. So when somebody talks to you about paradise, it doesn't exist anymore. Now we go to heaven. It's a heaven or hell issue. Either you go directly to heaven or you go directly to hell. But you got to live even more so in tune with God this day and time than, we, than, than they did then. Because we're even more so responsible. Jesus, the Bible even tells us so. At one time, they could lust and not get by because you could give that offering. But now you're not even supposed to look upon a woman with lust because you've already committed adultery with her. And that's just one of the things. There's many other things, too. Anything else. You look at somebody and say, boy, I just can't stand that guy. Murder it's just like driving a dagger in. So we're supposed to love, kill them with love, not kill them with, you know, knives and stuff like that. And like I tell people all the time, with adultery, the only thing that gets you, that breaks that bond that's made when you say I do when you get married is death. Physical death. And that doesn't mean you take out a gun and shoot your spouse because you're tired of it. No. Nope. That means you stay with them and you let God do the, do the deal. And if they're not going to come around, God will take care of them. God will eventually get you out from underneath that burden. And the quickest way to get out from underneath that burden is to stay on your knees before God. And let him, and let him take care of it. Because when we start trying to do something ourselves, 
we set God's work back. God might be just fixing to do something, and then we have to just step in there and put our two cents in there, and that sets him right on back. The, the, Lord, the Lord forgives us for our sins. A lot of people in, in this late age, they think that uh, being forgiven means you get to go and do it again. A fresh start in sin, mm -hmm. you don't get another companion. No, no, no. no. That, not till that companion has died. God's and there is another one stipulation man, one too. woman. He didn't make one man and two women. That's right. right. There's another stipulation too. He said only in the Lord. And that's right. And that's I, right. I believe that that's the way that God is from the get-go. God after really doesn't was, even want us to think about getting married that's after until we get saved. Died. If you get divorced yeah. and mm -hmm. we're still alive, you can't yeah. marry again. Yeah. You can in the state of Texas. You can't. Well, state of Texas, the well, state of California, let men marry each other. So nah, I don't yeah. go by laws. No. Of the Bible the laws says to obey the laws of the land, land trouble but when they God. go against God's law, it's no yeah. law at all. That's right. The laws of the land will get you in trouble with God. But God's laws is what you got to obey. That's why the number one thing is you got to first Decide one thing in your mind. Are you going to believe what that book says? Are you going to believe what the Word says? And the reason I go by the Holy Bible, by the King James Version, is because of the factor that it works. Mm -hmm. um, the, the things that are in there are true. Jesus. When I came to God and I was uh, out there in sin, God saved my soul. God took away the desire for those things. And that's why I believe in that. I've, I've been healed. I've, all of the things that that Bible talks about have happened in my life. And I've seen them happen in other people's lives. And I know, but I know that it's real. I got the Holy Ghost here. I got all of those things. I've got gifts in my life. Everything according with that Bible. That's why I believe in that Bible. That's why I know that it's real. Many adulterers, adulterers should try to straddle the fence. Oh, yeah. He's the example of Jesus with the high priest trying to trick him by bringing forth a woman who had been caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene. And, uh, Jesus basically told him, he without sin among you cast the first stone. Right. Because by the law, by legalists, by the law of the word, she was to be taken out and stoned. Mm -hmm. Well, they had all been guilty too. So they left him. He Some said, of those very people, they probably, probably, probably with was an adultery. That's why they knew she was in. But however, he said, woman, where are thine accusers? Mm -hmm. And she says, there are none, Lord. And he said, go and sin no, no more. Right. Not to continue in adultery. Right. Not to contend to you in it. Mm -hmm. but to, see, when the Lord forgives you, He don't give you a, a license to go stay off in it. No. And now you've got a fresh see, start in it. When, as far <laughs> as that part goes, God <laughs> cleans you up in it, and you're clean. No. God That's takes you that, that yeah, adult no, situation away. I'm born away. again. I'm new. I get to get married one more time. This time I'm going to do it right. It but know. when you say to when you go out there and commit the sin again, part, it's sin. There's a knot tied there, and the only one that can loose that is the Lord through death. That's right. And that's physical death. Because God created, first he created man. Then he took a rib from that man. And he made Eve. And whenever that he made Eve, they still, he performed a marriage ceremony right there in the Garden of Eden. The same type of marriage ceremony that is performed before the judge or before the, the priest or however you go to do it. I think it should be done in church. I think it should be done before the pastor in church. And when God, when you stand there before God, and you make those wedding vows, then God joins you together as one flesh. She becomes that rib that has been removed from your body. He said it's not good for man to dwell alone. That's why he made him a companion, a helper. Then he make him multiple companions. That's the first time in the world where God gone. said something's not good. Everything was good up until that point. Yeah. Well, it was still good. Well, it's not good for man to be alone. Yeah, it's not good for man to be alone. That's right. That's when what you he read said. the scriptures. He wanted him. He wanted him to, to, to uh, have a companion. That's the first time we read in God's word mm -hmm. where God saw something that right. wasn't just perfect yet. Right. It wasn't good perfect. for man to be alone. No. But see, that was during the time that God was still in process yes. of making, yes. making I agree. things straight. And when after everything was said and done, it was still perfect. Yes. And when Adam and Eve were joined together, there was just one, one man, one woman, not two men, not two women, not a dozen women. Just one man, one woman, in this garden, and they had everything they could ever hope for. And the Garden of Eden was like a miniature heaven. Yeah. It's going to be the same thing in heaven. Everything we have need of is going to be right there. We're going to have the Father there. We won't have no more need of these because there won't be no more praying through. That's right. We're already we're either there or we're not. There's not going to be no more praying. We won't have to worry about praying for wayward loved ones because they'll be there. And those that ain't there, they ain't going to make it. But the, this lesson is all about 
tying into what we've been discussing. Yeah. Without Jesus, we'd have no hope. The best we can do would be to make it into the center of the earth, and that'd be as far as we'd go. First off, okay. yeah, you kind of don't know. You got it in your heart, your heart, but that's the way it is. And I thank God that we can make it into heaven, and there is no discrimination with God. The only thing that stands between us and God is us ourselves. I was just yesterday I got my uh, thing for Social Security. Got the raise, you know, and I'll just read it down the thing. And it said for right. same sex marriage, they get Social Security and they get the raise too. Right. For same sex marriage. Right. It's just like what we were talking about earlier. The laws of man are not always going to line up with the laws of God because there's enemy between the flesh and the spirit. And when you live by the flesh, you're going to die by the flesh. When you die by the flesh, you're going to hell. It's just that simple. And there are certain things, yes, we have to live by the laws of the land. We can't go out here and run stop signs and go 100 miles an hour down the road when it says 40 or whatever without having to pay a debt. Can't go out here and do everything we want to. And if we can't do it in the natural, how much more so can we not do it in the spirit? Amen. The natural things are not as important as the spiritual things. They're going to pass away. Everything we see here is going to go to dust one day. Yeah. That's the natural way of thing. The but beer commercial show everyone all happy and smiling. Oh yeah. They don't show the death it's just and destruction like that. and the it's ruination. It's more like that cigarette commercial where it shows, starts out showing the and camel and the marble man and all that stuff and all these wonderful things going on. But in the end, it shows a little scrawny man sitting in a wheelchair, dying. barely able to breathe and dying of cancer because of him letting that little white guy get a hold of him and kill him. And too many times people don't understand a lot of things because they don't understand what's in these things. That's what makes it bad. What's in the cigarettes is what makes it bad. There is a nicotine spirit in there. That thing will get a hold of you, and that thing will hold you like a vice grip. And David can attest to that. He was one. I think he was really hung up on them real bad. I was hung up on them, but not as bad as I was on drinking. And there's other demons that come in there too. See, there's not just one demon in these things. He's there's a bunch of right now. I went to turn it off. It's got a little freak somewhere on it. Yes, Richard. Yeah, yeah, Richard. I got baptized up here. As soon as I came out of the water, the Holy Ghost cleansed me, and that was the last cigarette that's been on that's 10 right. years ago. Amen. Thank, thank God for that. Amen. Same way with me. God took that thing away from me over here, and I haven't, haven't wanted them anymore. That was proof positive to me. It was the Lord God. Amen. No way I could quit. That's right. I could have took the patch and stuff, but no, the Lord did instantly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Instantly healed me, delivered me of cigarettes. Amen. All my sin, matter of fact. But that was the one that was the hang up that I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't get over. Amen. Amen. That's the same hang up that a lot of people have this day and time, and they don't want to get unhung from. They like, it. as long as you like that sin, you're not going to get unhung from. It. But God. We'll let you know real quick what's wrong with you. Just let you. That's what I had. You sure to. I can't turn that little thing on? I like to drink it so well. <laughs> Just hand it to me. I'll take care of it. He's got a little switch on his chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'd rather hear the bird singing than hear a lot of other things. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, come here, bird. Okay. So we have really concluded our lesson. Does anybody have any more, anything on their mind? If not, we're going to go ahead and read the memory verse. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord and the beauty of his of holiness. Amen. And that's the bottom line of it all. Give unto God all the glory and honor praise for he's worthy of it all I got it, and with that i'm going to close the sunday school and turn it over to brother david all right dennis ray could you come uh, adjust the let's go ahead and pause that boy he pounded the altar and this little guy just started singing <laughs> it didn't stop. <laughs>